What's going on you guys? It is your boy, the American F1 fan, Eric Ringle here, and it is race week. We return after a three week layoff. We return to Singapore for the first time since 2019 for the Singapore Grand Prix, but there's also been so many news and notes to come out the last week. So we're going to get on to news and notes and the Singapore Grand Prix race preview. So first and foremost, News that has come out this the last couple of weeks, we've obviously had the race calendar come out. We did a preview of that um, in another video. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below so you guys can check that video out. But the 2023 driver's market is really starting to come into, come into a little bit more focus. First things first, Colton Hurd is not going to be allowed to have his super license. Um, Red Bull tried and tried and tried, and then eventually... They just said they were giving up on the whole idea as the FIA didn't really seem to be budging on whether or not they would give him a super license. And so he is basically now out of Formula One for next season. Um, you know, there were a lot of other things that, you know, Red Bull or the FIA could have done. They could have gone ahead and bent the rules a little bit like they did for Max Verstappen um, when Max first got into Formula One. Um but, you know, unfortunately, the FIA wasn't going to budge with a U.S. guy coming in. Um, and so there have been, you know, some thoughts that, you know, a lot of the folks from the United States are like, you know, you did this for Max. Why is it now all of a sudden you want to stick to your guns and say, you know, we just can't, you know, allow him to have his super license. So, you know, it's a loss for Formula One. It's a, I think it's a huge loss for Colton Herta not to be able to get into Formula One next year. Because basically he was tabbed for the the AlphaTauri seat. Um, it looked like Pierre Gasly was probably going to be moving to Alpine, but now that's not maybe not the case. But Yuki Tsunoda, on the other hand, has signed a contract with AlphaTauri, so he will be one of the drivers at AlphaTauri in 2023. So looks like it looks like Yuki Tsunoda will be paired up with Pierre Gasly next season, unless. Alpine sneaks in there and somehow, you know, potentially signs him away or, you know, AlphaTauri lets him, you know, go to Alpine. So we could see that there. Also, Williams has released and said that uh, Nicholas Latifi will not be driving for Williams in 2023. And by that, we now have a pretty good idea who it's going to be. It's not going to be Logan Sargent like we you know, had predicted in our predictions video, it looks like it's probably going to be Nick DeVries um, driving along uh, alongside Alexander Albon. That's been the guy that's been kind of tabbed over the last several weeks. Um, and then the the race right before we went into this little three-week break, Nick DeVries has a really good race for Williams filling in for Alexander Albon. And, you know, it just, it's looking like all signs are pointing to Nick taking over that second seed in Williams, which is a shame for Logan Sargent because he is oh so close and it would really put another United States guy on the Formula One grid. Then yesterday it was announced that Joe Guan Yu will be returning to Alfa Romeo and I think this is a fantastic signing for Alfa Romeo. I just don't think the reliability has been there in the Alfa Romeo this year and it, I, I don't think... Guan Yu Zhou has really been able to, you know, show his true potential without the reliability issues creeping up on Alfa Romeo and, you know, knocking him out of some races that probably he was going to do at least fairly well, maybe finish, you know, bottom end of the points or at least, you know, top 12. So it's really great to see the Guan Yu Zhou will get another, another chance next season in 2023. So now taking a look at the 2023 grid as it looks today. There are only three seats left available within Formula One. You obviously have the seat at Alpine. Um, there's talk that, you know, that could be between Mick Schumacher. Um, that's really been the name that's been bandied around. You can hear Pierre Gasly a little bit's been thrown around. Those are probably the two guys that are fighting over that seat. Then you obviously have Haas Formula One, whose their second seat is not filled yet. There are so many names being named there. You have Nico Hulkenberg's name being brought back up. You've heard Michael uh, Mick Schumacher potentially may still get that seat. Um, it's no telling who Haas is going with. They're not, 
They're not even really, you know, they're keeping it really close to the vest. You can see Daniel Ricardo go to Haas. There have been more talks there that Daniel could go there. So that's going to be interesting to see. And then obviously the Williams seat is still technically open, although it looks like for all intents and purposes, it's going to be going to Nick DeVries, which, you know, congratulations to him. He He's really a racer that, you know, really deserved the spot a couple years ago when he won the championship in Formula 2, which was GP2 at that time. You know, so it's it's one of those that it was probably a seed over uh, over deserved. Also, some news and notes coming from uh, from this weekend is McLaren is going to be bringing a special two off livery. They're going to be racing this in Singapore and Japan next. This is quite an interesting uh, looking car. They've added some pink, you know, some pink flashes. It's this neon pink, and it's. I'm going to show you some of the pictures of, uh, over over while I'm talking, but like, I don't know. It was just weird. The, the pink really kind of made that car pop even more. So I'm going to be really interested to see what the McLaren car looks like um, this race weekend. And maybe, may, you know, maybe that brings them some luck. They maybe need a little bit of luck here as, you know, they're kind of been, you know, middle of the pack as of recently. So... It's really interesting to see what the uh, what the new livery will do for McLaren this weekend. Now getting into the Singapore race weekend itself. So they're bringing in the softest compound of tires. You got the C5 softs, you got the C4 mediums, and the C3 hards. This is the softest lineup that they have. Singapore has always been known as a track that, you know, they bring their softest compound of tires. Not a lot of tire degradation throughout the track, depending on the you know, the weather and how hot it gets. Um, but there is the potential of rain. They have talked about that Saturday and Sunday may bring some very, very heavy rain showers. And as we've seen in races past, this could really jumble up the grid. So really interested to see if, you know, maybe we get a shock Saturday, you know, pole sitter. Um, or is it going to be the Max Verstappen show like we've seen over the last several weeks? Now, going into this race weekend, this is the first weekend so far that Max Verstappen can clinch the Formula One World Drivers Championship. So, if he finishes first and gets the first uh, fastest lap of the race, Charles Leclerc can finish no lower than fourth. And Sergio Perez, who is still in the title fight, can finish no lower than ninth. So, he would basically have to score some kind of points. And I'm... Uh, I may have that reversed up a little bit. I th Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's the reverse. Sergio can finish no lower than fourth, uh, and Charles can finish no lower than ninth. Um, so, again, first weekend that Max can potentially clinch the World Drivers' Championship. I don't see it happening this weekend. I, you know, just in the grand scheme of things, I think Singapore's not really the, the track that's going to you know, really ruin this championship unless the rain throws such a, you know, spanner in the works that, you know, you get a crash lap one and Charles Leclerc is out of the race. I mean, then, yeah, then all bets are off and probably the championship is his at that point. Now, just to, to, thinking back to this track, I, you know, I would be remiss without saying I still miss, you know, if you look at the track layout, it, I think we would all be remiss without saying that we miss the Singapore sling. Like, I think that added the, the little bit of a uh, track identity. I mean, when you say the sling, and granted, most people call it the Singapore sling, so then you know, obviously, what the track is you know, what track it is, I think we really miss that, that, that little, sh that really quick chicane that like you would have to hit the curbs just right. Otherwise it, you know, popped you into the air, popped you into the wall. Like it was one of those that like you had to get perfect. Otherwise you were going to get punished for not being a perfect driver through that particular section of the track. But it's still a really great track here. It's not a very high speed track. Obviously you'll have it down the 
the front straightaway, but this is about one of the more technical tracks you will see on the Formula One calendar. A lot of low speed to mid speed corners. Right now, you know, with the way Red Bull is going, I, you know, this could be a track that may not suit them quite well because they were obviously fast on the straightaways. Um, you know, maybe this is a track that suits Ferrari and it's going to be a track potentially that'll suit Charles Leclerc. But getting into my race predictions this weekend. So I think with the rain coming this weekend, I think that's going to throw a huge, you know, uh, monkey wrench in there. Um, and I think we're going to get, obviously, I think we're going to get a jumbled up grid. I think maybe Max doesn't qual start, uh, you know, maybe front row. Maybe he starts, you know, closer to six to the six to nine range, I think. Um, I think Charles Leclerc will have a great qualifying session. But in the grand scheme of things, this is a race weekend that Charles Leclerc needs to win. Like, this is a what most people in most sports would call a must-win situation. And I just think, I know Charles Leclerc has not been in this situation much, but I do know that he he has been able to show in certain points you know, when he was at Sauber, you know, even his early days in Ferrari, he's been able to show at certain points that he can, you know, get the job done. And I, I think he's going to push this championship to the very next round. I think Charles Leclerc wins this weekend. I would even say Max doesn't even finish on the podium this weekend. That's going to be my other prediction for this weekend is I don't think that Max Verstappen finishes on the podium in Singapore, but Guys, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you guys think is going to happen in Singapore? Do you see a Charles Leclerc victory in the cards, or is it going to be the Max Verstappen show? Once again, let me know in the comment section down below, as always. Guys, also slap a like on this video for more daily and weekly Formula 1 content. I'm going to be doing a reaction, uh, some more reaction videos to certain Singapore videos this weekend, so leading up to the race, so you guys will be able to get to see that as well. But guys, slap a like on the video and also subscribe if you guys are new for more daily and weekly Formula One content. We are back racing, so there'll be more Formula One comment to come out for you guys. But guys, thank you so much for watching the video. And guys, for the American F1 fan, I'm Eric Ringel, signing off.